What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and 2023 may have been the best year for new gaming headsets. Because not only has wireless technology improved over the years, but so have microphones, the biggest drawback to most gaming headsets. So today, for the holidays, we're going to be kicking off my top 5 gaming headsets that came out in 2023, with some honorable mentions as well. We're gonna go over all of them for you guys today, talk about you know their features, pros, cons, do a mic test as well, so you can see the best of the best from this year and which one would be the best for you. Now before we begin, I'll have all these listed for you in the description down below so you can check them out. This won't be a dedicated review of each headset, obviously, this video will be five hours long, more so like a two, three minute synopsis of each one. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna have a giant mic test comparison for each of them during their segment. I'm also gonna have a mic test, but we're gonna stack them all at the end as well so you can hear how they sound back to back to back, just give you an idea of their quality. Let's kick this one off. So starting off with the honorable mentions, first we have the HyperX Cloud 3. These are the newest update in their popular cloud product lineup from years and years, and these are the wired version. These actually have the second largest drivers out of all the headsets on today's list. It's the most affordable as well, but it doesn't crack the top five because it's just not a major update from recent models, with the exception of their brand new microphone, which sounds fantastic, but you know, still worthy of being mentioned today. Now, in terms of the microphone quality, this is the sound test for the HyperX Cloud 3 mic. What we're going to do, like I was saying, for each of these headsets coming up is do a quick little overview of the microphone so you can hear how it sounds. Then at the very end of the video, all stacked back to back to back, we're going to have a giant mic test comparison for you guys. So giving you two separate sort of samples here. The microphone here is unidirectional, so picking up directly what's in front of it my mouth on a flexible gooseneck design so you can position it as well and if you want to mute the microphone on the back of the left ear cup there's a button you actuate in and there's a little led light that blinks very fast red to let you know it's muted to catch your attention so you know when you are or are not muted Coming in at $100, and by the way, a lot of these headsets are going to be on sale for the holidays, especially with Black Friday and Cyber Monday, so be on the lookout for these price drops. They definitely hit a pretty good affordable margin, I'd say, because a lot of headsets nowadays, as you'll see by the list as it goes on, are trending near like $150 to $250 for those more premium wireless options, so $100 is a pretty good price for these. Feature-wise, it's pretty much unchanged from their previous Cloud2 wired headset. You have your inline controls a mic mute button on the back of the left ear cup, some bass vents up top, and they sound relatively the same as well. I've always been a fan of their Cloud Series design. Very simple and stealth looking, especially with this all black model versus the black and red versions they have, but very lightweight, super, super comfy. Again, for under 100 bucks, I think HyperX is doing some really good stuff here. And then the next honorable mention as we move into our top five is gonna be the new Corsair HS80 Max. This is a refreshed version of their HS80 RGB product lineup from a year or two ago. Admittedly, not too much has changed, honestly. Hence, it's still being in like a runner-up spot, but they are still good enough to be mentioned. With these being wireless, you plug in the dongle into your PC, PS5, PS4. You can pair with Bluetooth as well on these, and they come in a few different color options to pick, you know, to match your personal preference or your setup's aesthetics. Design-wise, again, still relatively unchanged from the original HS80 RGB but I've always been a fan of the very clean looking design on these as well, with only three real controls really. You have the power button and the volume rocker on the back of the left ear cup, and the Bluetooth button on the back of the right ear cup. You hold it into pair and tap it to switch sources. There is RGB on each side of the ear cups, but it's just the Corsair sales logo, so it's not gonna be, you know, just super obnoxious looking. And in terms of, you know, the overall comfort, they're okay, I will say. One of the things that's kind of weird is you have the headband that's constantly um, just flat like this, then it will compensate to sort of alleviate some of the tension of the headband off of your head. So it's not the most comfortable. It doesn't adjust in terms of like the ear cup, um, like height or anything. So it's fixed pretty much, except for the ear cups being able to rotate uh, 90 degrees so you can lay them flat on your desk or around your neck. Audio wise, again, out of the box, nothing too crazy, but one of the saving graces with this is they are very flexible with being EQ'd. Whether that's in the, you know, the Corsair IQ software, or if you're using something else like 
SteelSeries Sonar, for example. Stock, they just sound okay. So I would definitely recommend EQing these. That really brings these to life. So rounding this one out, this is the mic test for the HS80 Max. And an interesting little point to bring up here is this microphone and the headset itself is on the latest firmware update. And that's crucial because with the first rollout, if you purchase this um, when it first came out or you just haven't updated the headset at all, they've gotten better. They sound better and the microphone has gotten better as well. So this is currently how it sounds. I think it's very clear for the most part, but not as good as the last gen HS80, which is just kind of strange to me. I'm not really sure why that is, but that's just the case. The microphone itself is on, the microphone itself is on a rubber boom arm here. If you want to mute it, you flip it up. There's a little tactile click, so you'll know once it's muted. And there's an audible voice that says mic off, mic on. The HS80 Max comes in at $150. Now, officially kicking off the top five today is honestly one of my personal favorites of the year, and it would be higher up on the list. But as an open back headset, I realize it's not everyone's cup of tea, but these are phenomenal. The Corsair Virtuoso Pro. These are audiophile grade cans. Open back headsets for me personally have always been my go-to just because you have that more open, you know, naturally open soundstage just due to the design of that open grill. This headset is also wired, with the rest of them today going to be wireless. And like you do see on other audiophile grade headphones, these require to be plugged in on each ear cup. Additionally, they're completely analog. So no USB connection, but they are easy to run at 32 ohms. So you can plug them into your amp and DAC or just your PC. You're not going to have problems really running them. 32 ohms is very user friendly. It does come with two separate cables inside the box. One of them is just your audio cable, and the other one's what's gonna have the built-in microphone. So you can use these just as regular headphones without a microphone attached to it. You know, take them out with you on the go. But for the setup scenario where you are gaming and chatting with your friends, you do have that separate mic that you just plug right in. Now for the mic test for the Virtuoso Pro, you can get a pretty good idea of how this sounds. Again, this is also wired, being a completely analog headset. It is an omnidirectional pickup pattern, and on a very flexible gooseneck design here, uh, braided, matching not only the color of the headset, but the actual entire braid of the cable. So I like that cohesion going on. And if you want to mute the microphone, there is a switch awkwardly positioned on the back of the mic. So not on the ear cup, but on the back of the mic where it plugs in. Again, this the mic test of the Virtuoso Pro. Comfort wise, I'd say they're middle of the pack naturally due to the size of the ear cups. They are on the bigger and slightly heavier side. Uh, they do rotate again to lay flat, which is always a plus. Oddly, no inline controls, so you can adjust the volume of these on the fly. There is a mic mute little switch on the back of the microphone, but other than that, no buttons to toggle, no volume adjustment, because again, they're completely analog. That's all gonna be done through your PC or your amp, DAC, whatever your audio setup is. And yeah, they're just not the most comfortable. I personally don't mind them too much, but they do have some clamping uh, pressure sort of right near the top where the headband starts to come in. Uh, you can see right what I'm talking about right up here. If there was more padding on the top of the headband, I think it would uh, make them more comfortable overall. But the sound makes up for those flaws. These are very warm sounding for being open back, which again, I prefer. You now have that wider sound stage and that's really gonna benefit you in most games, I'd say, especially if you're playing, you know, FPS or open world games. Anything where there is an active world going on, because when you widen that sound stage, it really just immerses you more. That's always been something that I've continually brought up when I talk about open back headphones or headsets. Because it doesn't sound like you just have, you know, drivers on your ears. It sounds like you're in the middle of the action. So I've always loved that. I've used Sennheiser's HD 6XX headphones for a while. And out of the box, these kind of really reminded me of that. But I'd say these have a bit more punch to them. Like I said with the HS80 Max, these are also very capable of being pushed when you're you know, making your own custom EQs. I think it's a lot to do with those custom graphene drivers Corsair is using in these. So you could really push these when it comes to making your own custom EQs to make them sound how you want. 
So they come in at number five for me today because again, I realize open back isn't gonna be everyone's preference. I really, really like these. I can say these are audiophile grade headphones that can be converted into a headset, has a really good mic, really good drivers. $200 is the current MSRP for these. You can get them in white or a, like a, a black color as well. So I think they look great, they sound great, but they come in at number five. I kind of want to put them at like three or four, but again, open back, not everyone's cup of tea. I get it. Coming in at number four though, is going to be the Bayer Dynamic MMX 200. This is Bayer Dynamic's brand new wireless headset. We've showed off their previous wired versions in the past, but they're cutting the cord, bringing their years and years of audiophile expertise into the wireless gaming headset market. And these were very surprising. Take a look at them, they're gonna be designed very similarly to their other Bayer Dynamic headphones like the DT series. You know, the same yoke, same sort of construction to the ear cups, so very, very similar in that regard. And as a result, they're honestly on the lighter side of things. They're not heavy or bulky. Uh, you can see they kind of, you know, flare out up top here. So all the pressure is taken off, again, Pretty comfortable for the most part, no complaints on my end. In terms of controls, we all have them on the back of the ear cups here. And one of the more interesting things this has is toggle what they call an augmented mode. And it's not something that I personally use or have a need for, but on each side of the ear cups, there is a little microphone. So augmented mode means when you put them on, you'll be hearing obviously your game and stuff, but when you trigger that with the, uh, the volume rocker on the back, which is how you transfer all your different modes and stuff, that uses the microphone and sort of implements what's going on around you. If you're trying to keep an ear out for the doorbell or the dogs barking or someone just, you know, trying to talk to you or something like that. Um, it's one of the features, like not the most useful, uh, but it has it built in. It also has like a low latency mode, so you can use them wired, so there's no wireless connection. And it does have Bluetooth you can switch between as well. I'd say the augmented mode is kind of more gimmicky than anything, but hey, it's a feature. Maybe someone out there could find that stuff useful. Now for the microphone quality on the MMX 200, this is how it sounds with the cardioid pickup pattern to the very flexible gooseneck design of the microphones. So you could, you know, move it around, position it in front of your mouth so it picks up your voice the best. I think it sounds pretty damn good, again, for a wireless headset, of course. Uh, very impressed with it overall. If you want to mute the microphone, there, use that same, uh, the volume dial on the bottom of the left ear cup. You actuate that in, and that's what will mute the mic. And there's a little tiny red LED light on the microphone itself that will light up to let you know it is muted. Although it's a very, very faint LED light, you're not going to really notice it out of your peripheral vision. So keep that in mind in case you are accidentally muted. You very well may miss that. But yes, this is the microphone for the MMX200. So not only is the microphone very, very impressive, but the sound here. You can really see where Bear Dynamics been shining with their R&D for gaming headsets. These are very bassy. They have neutral mids, which usually it's a bit of a drowned out scoop when you're very bassy like that, but also a very clear high end to these. Very, very good for positional audio and stuff as well. You know, no issues with being able to pinpoint where footsteps are coming from or if someone is above me or below me. And I wasn't using their wired low latency mode, but I had no issues with that whatsoever. And kind of like I was saying in the intro, we've seen such a leap over the last two, three years in the wireless technology scene for these gaming peripherals that for a wireless headset with practically no latency to report of, no issues with the sound quality, these sound just as good as, you know, equivalent wired headphones or a headset around the same price point. So a fantastic microphone, great sound quality. They are a bit steep at around $250, so that's the real main drawback. But again, like I was saying, as we get more into these top tier gaming headsets, that higher price is sort of to become the norm, but well worth it in these cases. Now for the number three spot, we have probably Turtle Beach's best product that they've ever made. These are the Stealth Pro. We're gonna toss it to Gadgetry Tech for his take on them and why he loves them for the number three spot. 
Thanks so much, Frank. What's up, everyone? It's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and I'm here to talk about the Turtle Beach Stealth Pro, the gamer's headset. I say that because the Stealth Pro represents Turtle Beach's best effort at addressing what gamers have always asked for. It's loaded with features like simultaneous Bluetooth, game to chat mix on Xbox, and now thanks to a firmware update also on PC, it even has custom EQ that you can save to the headset, meaning console players can benefit from your own unique sound profile. Turtle Beach also includes user swappable batteries. They give you a 12 hour charge each. There's two in the box and you can even buy replacements online at only $20 a pop. This allows you to pretty much game indefinitely, but also if the batteries start losing their charge over time, you don't have to buy a new headset, just buy a new battery and you're good to go. Another huge win is cross-platform support. So if you buy the Xbox version, there's a little switch on the dongle that allows you to switch from Xbox to USB mode. And the USB mode works on PC and PlayStation, meaning you only have to buy one headset to work on all of your platforms. It's basically a headset that does everything, whether you needed it or not. And it even has excellent active noise cancellation. So if you have loud PC fans or an HVAC system running in the background and you want to get rid of that, a simple press of the button will pretty much wipe it out, allowing you to get even more immersed in your game. But none of that would matter if it didn't sound good, and man, did Turtle Beach deliver. It has a sound profile closer to the Audiophiles headset, the Odyssey Maxwell, than pretty much any other wireless gaming headset on the market. So that means not only can you enjoy games, but mixed content consumption will also sound good on the Stealth Pro. But perhaps the most surprising win of the Stealth Pro is just how competitive it is with FPS gaming. It's arguably one of the best, if not the best, wireless headsets I've ever used for first person shooters and I'm not the only reviewer that felt this way. It's always on my headphone rack for a reason and it for that it's one of my favorite headsets of all time. It's not 100% perfect though. No headset is and the leather at pads with stronger clamp force which are designed to help with active noise cancellation and bass delivery can cause some discomfort for some people. It's not as comfortable as other headsets in a comparable or even lower price range so the comfort factor may not be one of its strongest suits. The microphone while decent isn't class leading either with the more affordable Corsair HS80 Max, the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro 2023 edition and the even more affordable Razer Black Shark Hyperspeed version all having better sounding mics for less money. It is flipped to mute though. Nice. Now I do have an in-depth review of the Stealth Pro and other gaming headsets on my channel if you want to go pay that a visit. But before I go, huge thanks to Frank for including me in this video. Thank you all so much for watching this and I hope you all have a good one. See ya. So big shout out to Gadget Tree Tech for his take on why he loves the Turtle Beach Stealth Pro. I'll drop his channel down below. He has great, great audio reviews and stuff. But yeah, everything he says is 110% true. For being a closed headset, these sound very open. They have a wide sound stage, and they are really known as the FPS headset out there because if you play a lot of FPS games, these shine in that regard, especially when it comes to, again, directional audio, footprints, footprints, footsteps, knowing where your enemies are at all times, that does give you an advantage when you have that more heightened awareness of where they are in game. So these are fantastic. A console gamer's dream headset, really. And again, whether you're on PS5, Xbox, they have those different models and stuff as well, but both are compatible with PC, obviously. And what's really cool about these that a lot of other headsets just sort of fail on is not only is there um, software for PC, but there's also an app. So you can control these with both either the software or the app and all of the EQing, the profiles, whatever you adjust saves natively onto the headset. So you can take these anywhere, use them with any source and have it saved onto the headset. My biggest gripe, honestly, is that they're just very bulky. I'm not a big fan of the design. There's a lot of plastic elements torn in and they're just, you know, wide. Um, they're also sort of on the heavier side, but again, there's a lot of tech going on here. I don't feel like they would break or anything. They're just a large bulky headset. And the price of admission is $330. But again, if you're a console gamer, these are gonna be a must have, unless. The number two spot has piqued your interest with the 2023 version of the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro. Spoiler alert, these just automatically made the number two spot because they blew me away from the first time I've tried them on. The microphone in this headset is the best I have ever heard out of any gaming headset I've ever tested. 
Checking it out, the V2 Pro 2023 edition is the same exact design. The only real differences and upgrades here from the original V2 Pro is the fact that, again, it has a much improved microphone and this also has Bluetooth as well. I personally love the design. It's kind of like an homage to their original Black Shark headset from like 2010 or something, where it's sort of like the, you know, the pilot headset look. Very simple in terms of your controls as well. You have a volume dial built into the left ear cup, a mic mute button on the back of that as well with your power button. And then on the right ear cup, you have your EQ switcher built in as well. So for the Black Shark V2 Pro 2023, this is the new updated microphone, which they call their HyperClear Super Wideband mic, which is just a fancy way of saying a fantastic unidirectional microphone, because that's what it is. And as you've heard from other mic tests we've done so far, this just hands down sounds so clear and natural. It has body to it. There is really no weakness to it. This is like what I would say would be a good broadcast microphone. So when you're getting with your friends, they should have zero complaints with this. They're probably going to be thinking you're going to be using like a desktop microphone. That's how good it sounds. Also on a flexible gooseneck design. If you want to mute the mic, like we were talking about before, there is a button on the back which you actuate in to mute the mic. Uh, no LEDs to let you know it is muted, however. So again, I think they look really nice, but the biggest thing for me, um, in addition to the microphone, is these are also the most comfortable headset I've ever worn. And again, that, that's saying a lot. When this has two things, that is the best of the best that I've ever tried. Considering I'm coming up on nearly 10 years of this channel, I reviewed a lot of audio gear, headsets, headphones in general. These have the best mic, and for me, they're the most comfortable. The weight distribution is perfect. They're not light, but they feel light. There's zero pressure points anywhere on this headset and it's just, it's amazing. These feel incredible. They also sound incredible. They're a very, very warm sounding headset with their 50 millimeter drivers inside. So you get a nice punchy bass and again, a lift in the high ends. It's that sort of typical Razer V shape. You know, they try to make them sound very fun sounding. <laughs> you get a nice warm punch, but also a lot of lift in the high end. So they're sparkly. Another headset with great directional audio for pinpointing where your enemies are. That's sort of a reoccurring theme with these new and improved headsets. And despite Synapse being Synapse, they have very good built-in EQs. So if you don't like them being V-shaped, you want a more neutral sound signature to them, you can bring those down, sort of equal out the mids, and you can push them and they're not gonna get really muddy and distorted. I think Razer did a phenomenal job with this new update because again, the mic itself makes it worthy of rebuying these if you have an older version. They come in just under $200. So the Black Shark V2 Pro 2023 edition taking down my number two spot. So what is the number one gaming headset of 2023 and possibly all time? I think anybody that's tried these or reviewed these could pretty much say that statement is true. That's gonna be the Odyssey Maxwell, another audiophile company from Odyssey, putting out the best gaming headset I've ever used, period. We're gonna to toss it to Brian from Bad Seat Tech for his take on these and why he loves them as well. Yo, what's good, Frank? What's up, everybody? Brian here from Bad Seed Tech, and we had a lot of really exciting gaming headset releases in 2023, but none of them impressed me quite as much as the Odyssey Maxwell. Odyssey has been responsible for some incredible audiophile headphones over the years, so the expectations for these were pretty high, especially after some of the challenges they faced with the Pinrose that came out before this. Sound quality on the Pinrose wasn't really the issue. It arguably sounded better than any gaming headset that had come out before it, but it suffered from really sketchy functionality and a build quality that wasn't really up to par with the Odyssey brand. Well, they must have taken all that criticism personally because they absolutely knocked it out with the Maxwell. The big headline is that the sound quality of the Maxwell impressed both gamers and audiophiles, and that's basically unheard of for a product that's aimed at gaming. Usually with gaming headsets, and especially wireless gaming headsets, you're trading off audio quality in exchange for convenience features like side tone and chat mix. And usually you'll hear us reviewers say some variation of it sounds great for gaming and it sounds passable for casual music listening. Not here though. It's the only headset I'll also wear is just a Bluetooth headphone when I'm working in the studio, and I'll often choose it over my Focal Batiste. That's a headphone that costs $600 
$100. Because with Maxwell, I can move right from music listening, hopping into a chat in Discord, taking a call, and then sitting down to play a game all on the same device. It topped all of my tests and connectivity and range for the wireless, toggling all the features, changing EQ modes, even the AI background noise cancellation on the mic is controllable all on the headset itself without having to use software. Though you still have access to both a Bluetooth control software for your phone and a PC-based software if you want. Now this is pricey at $299 or $329, and it's not perfect. It's heavier than most gaming headsets, though it's balanced really well, I find it perfectly comfortable for long sessions. The Bluetooth is not simultaneous, and the way it handles some of the Bluetooth features leaves a lot to be desired. You can check out my full review if you want some more info on that. And even with the very impressive AI background noise rejection for the mic, the overall quality of the mic itself just isn't the best. It gets beat out by options that cost a lot less, like the Corsair HS80 or the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro 2023 edition. Again, if you want detailed mic tests, you can check out my full review. It's also really important to note that while the mic has background noise rejection, this headset does not have any kind of active noise cancellation. Battery life here is very solid, but it does lack the battery swap system that we've seen on both the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless from Steel Series and the very surprising Stealth Pro from Turtle Beach. But if you're someone who puts a high priority on uncompromising audio quality in pretty much any scenario you can throw at it and the mic is secondary for you, the Maxwell is the gold standard for 2023. Thanks so much, Frank, for having me on. I hope everybody has a safe and happy holiday season. See you next time. So shout out to Bad Seed for his take on why he absolutely loves the Odyssey Maxwell gaming headset. And his review is the reason why I did a lot of research on him and picked him up myself because he gave him a glowing review. I looked around out there and that is all a very common theme here. Everyone who's tried these falls in love with them and rightfully so. These sound absolutely incredible. Not only for just gaming, but for listening to music, watching movies, anything. It's very hard to find a gaming headset out there that sounds good for gaming and music, let alone movies as well. This knocks all three out of the park. Again, Odyssey, an audiophile company that takes their expertise and mashes it into the perfect headset. Also with 90 millimeter planar drivers inside. That's nearly double the average driver size out there at you know between 40 and 50 is the average I'd say for most headsets or headphones. 90 millimeters here and they just sound so good. They very closely follow the Harman curve if you're familiar with that. It's pretty much like a scientific sound signature chart of what most users are going to think sounds the best. I know audio is very subjective, so what sounds good to you might not sound good to me and all that stuff. But yes, these very, very closely follow that Harman curve. And again, they could be EQ'd with their software and stuff. They also have a phone app for them as well. Um, I absolutely love these. Obviously, they come in at number one and I called them the best headset of all time. So that was an obvious statement. Now, again, like we've seen because Xbox and Microsoft have their proprietary wireless uh, software and just stuff going on, these do come in two different versions. You have your Xbox, PC, and PS5 compatible version for $320. Or if you just want to play on PS5 and your PC, they also have a Sony exclusive version just for that at $300. So, again, very, very pricey, but well, well worth it. These are end game for all of you out there. All right, now the big old mic test. Have you ever met a girl that you tried to date, but a year to make love, she wanted you to wait? Let me tell you a story of my situation. I was talking to this girl from the US nation. The way that I met her was on tour at a concert. She had long hair and a short miniskirt. I just got on stage dripping, pouring with sweat. I was walking through the crowd, and guess who I met? I whispered in her ear, come to the picture booth, so I can ask you some questions to see if you're a hundred proof. I asked her her name, she said blah blah blah. I took a couple of flicks, and she was enthused. I said, how did you like the show? She said, I was very amused. I started throwing bass. She started throwing back mid-range. But when I sprung the question, she acted kind of strange. Then I asked, do you have a man? She tried to pretend. She said, no, I don't. I only have a friend. Come on. I'm not even going for it. This is what I'm going to sing. You, you got what I need. 
but you say he's just a friend. And you say he's just a friend. Oh, baby. You got what I need, but you say he's just a friend. But you say he's just a friend. Oh, baby. You got what I need, but you say he's just a friend. But you say he's just a friend. R.I.P. Biz. So, all right, guys, that'll wrap it up for the top five gaming headsets of 2023 with some honorable mentions as well. Like I said before, I'll have them all listed for you in the description down below. We have a wide variety of headsets today, so uh, hopefully you can find one if you're looking to upgrade this holiday season. And again, shout out to Gadgetry Tech and Brian from Bad Sea Tech. I'll have their channels listed in the description as well for you guys. If you like this video, if it helped you out, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed. A lot more holiday content coming up. Have a good day.